Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary. Doing SmackDown-ish, where I pretty much go over the show to what I care to watch or anything like that. Not every match, and I just do what I want to do. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. And this will explain why. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, so look, they, they opened up, they recapped the six-man tag team main event from Money in the Bank. They made it look more than what it was. They made it look brutal, and it wasn't. Tama Tonga got his rear end handed to him the whole time. It was a decent tag match, yes. Only Kevin Owens made it look personal. Kevin Owens was a house of fire the whole time. He fought tooth and nail like he had to win. Cody and Randy wrestled like they was collecting the paycheck. You can go back and watch that. Look at the intensity. Even Tama Tonga, Tonga uh, Loa, who was on, on the outside, you know, Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa, they wrestled like they're trying to earn a paycheck. They would try to put food on the table. You know, so, you know, Owens, he was the life of the match, you know, un until the end. Because at the end, Jacob, with an acrobatic save, then, you know, and, and Solo Sokoa with the overhand chop that they try to pass off as a thumb to the neck. That was, the, that was, that's his finish. It was still a good finish. But finally, the bloodline looked decent. The thing is, though, they got to climb out of a defeat deficit. You can, you know, if you're going to get beat down for, for four weeks and then do good at a pay-per-view, it's, it's kind of like, what's, what's the point? You know, so they got to climb out of this deficit. And it's a good start. It's a good start. Okay. So here we go. And so when I'm curious, I'm going to take a look. And they prove why I shouldn't. So they open up with Tiffany Stratton. So she has Tiffy time. She gives a bland standard woman's promo. Then Bailey comes out. Bailey can talk. I like Bailey on the mic. I like Bailey. Uh, Tiffany sounded like a California uppity teenager too good for anyone, a.k.a. a mean girl. Nia Jax come out and joins the verbal fray. Bailey talks to Nia and runs down things and sounds really good doing it. And Nia called, what did she say? Bailey, like she had a, they should call her BBL Bailey, Brazilian butt lift. I'm like, that'd be funny if Bailey had enough butt to, to call it that. Bailey ain't got much of a booty. I'm like, ain't no Brazilian butt lift. It's, it's more like, how can I say, a shortened, dull arrowhead is about what she got. You know, I guess, you know, in a thousand years, they could dig her up and use her butt as some kind of relic or something. I don't know, but that was, that was what, and, and look, I'm not, I ain't body shaming. That ain't, I can do that easily, but no. Nah, I'm calling out what it is. You ain't going to sit there and talk about something and it ain't it. That's what pretty much got me in trouble with the, the E-Fed community. They, they're they claiming one thing and I'm like, nope, that, that's not what that is. Don't, don't, mm -mm. don't pass it off as that. That ain't it. I know what you got. I don't know why you're trying to say it ain't that, but that's what you got. Don't call it the other thing. You know, so that's, that's pretty much uh, where I am with, with, with that whole community, but still... Uh, Naya and Tiffany beat down Bailey, and then, and I keep hearing E Chen attacks with a Singapore cane running off the heels. And then they come back and say, Oh, there's the words on the screen. It's Mi Chen. Okay, and she's going against Naya Jax. And look, for anyone that was still, still saying the body shaming, trust and belief. Body shaming is what skinny people do to bigger people or more robust or morbidly robust people that's that's body shaming body shaming is what some people do to you know pick on somebody's nose or skin complexion that's that's body shaming so no nah, i'm just calling out that ain't no bbl <laughs> it's not big enough <laughs> she ain't got much <laughs> you ain't got much it ain't, you can't say it is <laughs> Um, so I, I had to note, we know Jax will win, so why even do this to this female savior? Because Meech has been coming in saving 
bodies for about, what, two weeks now, I think? So I skipped a bit and stopped to see Michin do, Michin do a cannonball in the corner for a two count and be deeply stunned and in awe from the knock, from the kick out. That old face, oh my God, I can't be naked, oh my God, ah. The super indie and it just made me lose favor. Michin hit the common swinging DDT for a two count. That should have ended the match. The fans were wanting it. Michin hit the move solidly. It should have retained the finisher status it used to have because that should have really done it. It looked good. The fans were with it. I was like, oh, that was brutal. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Naya kick out because Naya's queen and she's got the win. I was like, ah. It just, blah. That's about how I felt. I'm like, ah, come on, dude. So, yeah, eventually Naya wins. Bailey attacks her from behind. Tiffany attacks Bailey with the case from behind. Then they beat down Bailey in the ring. Now, I had to note what I don't understand is Bailey attack Naya from behind to save Meechin from Naya, who I guess was setting up for another bonsai drop, but she instead she stepped over the top rope looking at something on the floor. That was just odd. I, I, it just it, you know that'd be stupid. I I just don't. Uh, it's like when I would go to wrestling, because I never saw him really do it on TV. But the attacking wrestler would get the defender in the front headlock, back up to the corner, and then prepare for a vertical suplex or a souffle. I'm like, you're not going to suplex him over the corner. So I know this is going to be a reversal, which 100% is always a reversal. I was like, why do you do that? Why do you even try to give us the suspense like something might happen? I don't know. I was a kid thinking that. So anyway, after the match, Tiffany was teasing, handing in the case to cash it in, and the fans were behind it. Cash it in, cash it in, yay, do it, do it. They were chanting Tiffy Tom earlier. And Tiffy Tom would be good, it's just her delivery of it sucks. But Tiffy Tom can be used in a pesky way. Just, I got a few ways, but I, they'll never do it. And so, I thought I thought they loved Bailey. Why would they want for her to lose the belt? It's like I, I don't get it. I thought I thought Bailey was the epic female baby face. And the fans are like, yeah, cash it in. Beat her. Take her belt, Mrs. Heel. I don't get it. Nia even said that she was basically her and Tiffany is like. She's just there for the moment. She just serves as like some Barbie doll or something. She said, I don't know. But, uh, I don't. Uh, like, like Zimmo would say, the fans are fickle because I'm like, that's the baby face. Why you, why you cheering for the baby face to get messed up? That don't make sense. Solo Sokoa does a pre-tape announcing that he'll make a stronger, better bloodline than Roman Reigns ever could have. And it's a, they're nice little packages. I like these little things here. That's cool. That's good instead of having to go out to the ring, waste a whole lot of time. You get this right here, bam, right in your face, get it done. I like that. So then uh, there's uh, Andrade who's doing a sit down. And the question that, that this guy asked him is, what's next for Andrade? And I was like, somebody's going to come in and do something. That's because this is dumb. And Andrade, I'm like, look, somebody got to tell Andrade, don't that's man spreading right there. What in the hell? I'm like, are you practicing for doing splits? Cause you know, ain't, you, you, look, ain't no man sack that big unless he's got elephantitis of the scrotum. So, ah. Anyway, so let's just sit down with Andrade and then Carmelo Hayes come in talking his shit. This guy is annoying. He is annoying. He's talking to Travis. <laughs> and I took this. And then the thing was right from the man. Oh. So. Andrade says. So to answer the question. What's next for Andrade? And he points and says. Him. Okay. They're trying to get him over. I get it. Okay. Cool. Hey. I'm all for it. Help somebody get their stuff over. 
But man, don't be so damn annoying with the. Uh, he should have. It would have been better if they was doing a stand up talking, and then Carmelo just came in and blasted him. So look, Randy, he sits down with Cody and they talk. Randy says he'll have Cody's back if he gets attacked. Kevin is home because his family needs him way more than they do. When the bloodline business is over, a lot of men will be vying for that undisputed title. And I'll have your back then too. Fist bump, leave. LA Knight comes to comes down and he cuts an awesome damn promo that ends with him holding a contract with Nick Aldis's name signed. And then he signs it and he needs Paul to sign it. But Logan isn't there. He called him an edge lord. The crowd was stuck between because he got him on. Yeah, he got him on that. And it was like, yeah, you could hear him bleeding one into the other. It was funny. And you could kind of hear some of the fans laughing at that. So that that, that was fun. That was fun. But uh, yeah, I was like, true that to the edge lord thing. Um, you know, it, look, L.A. Knight got the fans eating from the palm of his hand. He's got it. L.A. Knight got an it factor, but they won't let it do anything. And look, he was like, did you see? He was like, I just, I told you, I'm like consistently money in the bank. So even though I didn't win the match, someone else did. What did happen is, look at this footage. And they showed him do the O'Connor roll. Pin Logan Paul. He's like, I beat the U.S. champion. You know, that's what you saw. And I'm like, no. What I saw was the baby face rolling up the heel with an epic handful of tights and cheating to get the win. That's what I saw. <laughs> and I wish L.A. Knight had threw something out about that and just said, but it's Logan Paul, you know, the great desecrator, so it don't matter. That would have been nice for me anyway, but that's just a real personal thing. So, but you know, WWE, they don't want to leave that behind. That's what they want to do. So, after that, we get uh, Blair Davenport, who does a, a pre tape promo. And it's interesting. She sounds polished, like she knows what she's saying and how she wants to say it. And she's fighting and beating Naomi. When I saw Naomi as her challenge, I was like, yep. So, I was like, I don't know what Naomi did, but I think she's sorry for it. They just beat on her. Is the, is the money that good to keep losing? I get being a superstar, but that's a jacked up legacy to have. So, I skipped Naomi's entrance to see her doing some super slow mule kick to get Blair off of her. Then she does a seated sweep, which looked pretty all right. But I'm like, you're not a copper wetter fighter, so you don't need to be doing that. And then while Blair was on the mat, Naomi hit the ropes. And because Blair wasn't where she was supposed to be, Naomi had to grab a side headlock, making Naomi look stupid. I mean, she's going to do that on her own. But that made her look like she didn't know what she was doing. Come off the ropes, I'm going to ah, headlock. Because Blair wasn't in the right spot at the right time. Maybe she didn't understand. Maybe her, she was just kind of spaced out and didn't get it at the moment. Maybe she was sandbagging her. I don't know. But Blair wasn't in the right spot at the right time. And I'm saying they're like, she looks faintly familiar, but she looks weird. I don't get it. Okay. Naomi took forever to shake her butt and push Blair off from the corner. And then took forever to do a middle rope split for a two count. I wrote, maybe that's why she. I wrote maybe that's why she's the beaten horse of the women's division because this is stupid. So I skipped and Naomi hits the bubble bomb. I was like, well, that seems like the setup for a finish, and then rolls it over to the ghetto stretch for a three count. I, I wanted to be surprised, but seeing how she was performing, I'm annoyed that she won. I was, I'm like, she shouldn't be getting beat on, and then I see her performance. I was like, maybe she should be getting beat on. So I had to know this was after I had to note it. This match, this was after Blair's pre-tape about all being how everyone's unsuccessful and being weak. And they're telling them if they if they want to stop it, they do something about it. This made Blair look like Scrappy Doo. 
So, okay. I had to make the note. Okay. So I was too curious as to why she lost with that woman's voice and natural presence, as well as commentary talking about her conquering Britain and Japan. So I looked it up. Okay, it's B. Princely. I'm like, B? I'm like, that's like wrestling excellence, basically, from what I have seen of her. Promos in stardom, epic. I didn't see her in New Japan for wrestling. I know it's a sister thing there, but I, no. So I was like, treating her like this has to be about something. Maybe they're starting her off slow or it was just a competitive job match for filler. I don't know. B. Prisley's done a lot. And she means a lot. So I don't know why you bring her in and job her out like this. You know, I, I don't know. So DIY defends the W tag titles against the team they defeated before A Town Down Under, and they won. I won't go watch that match. I didn't want to, I, did, I just didn't feel like it. I'm like, I, I, I just didn't feel like it. Just didn't. I've been watching TV for a couple of days without my damn blue screen glasses on, and I just don't have the eyes. And I'm still doing it right now like an idiot. So, uh, as soon as I get done with this, put my eyes on and I got to edit some audio for Cedra's, uh, what she wants to do on YouTube, if she's going to do it. We'll see. Um, so, hopefully I get the names right. If I don't, my bad. All right, my bad. But there's too many clones in the in in the tag team division for this for that match but um okay so jacob fatu he runs in while i think it was austin theory who bailed on waller jacob wipes out uh yeah wipes out waller i think that's who he wiped out i think but then he obliterates the tag champs I'm like, this kind of made the tag champs a little weak. But at the same time, this is the top heel group. This got Jacob Fatu. So Ciampa hit a stiff DDT and Jacob eats it. Thrust kicks him, delivers his signature, pop up, captures Samoan drop, and he nailed it too. It was all he rolled back and everything. That was just an epic one. I don't think Jacob is too used to being this light, retaining that strength. You know, uh, then Jacob hit a double jump, seated moonsault on Gargano. I think that was Gargano. And then his MLW finisher, the BME on Champa. That they are showing you what Jacob can do and in spectacular fashion. With the ring cleared, the bloodline come out with Jacob welcoming them. Solo praising Jacob for a job well done. Take a break. After the break, Solo tells the fans to acknowledge him and they boo and shout no. Solo and the Tongans are dressed in black and I'm like, there's some red on them. A little bit of red somewhere on them, which I think is a nice touch. Find the red. Sokoa's was his socks. That's still good. It's cool. No problem with that. You got to support the red. It'd be better if it was on his head. That way he could wear all black. See? Red's already there. Jacob knows what Jacob's on the program. He knows what to do. Solo was doing well on the mic. I, I like what he's got to say. I'm believing it. He says they don't deserve Roman when the fans are saying we want Roman. Like you don't deserve Roman, but you got me now. So they mad at that. So, and they're not wanting him or none of that stuff. So, Solo's doing well promo wise. And he ain't trying to talk too tough. He's like, y'all don't want to acknowledge me. I mean, what happened to the other people that didn't acknowledge me? You know, my own brother, flesh and blood, he's gone. Paul Heyman, he's gone. You know, he says when Roman come back, he's going to acknowledge me too. And I'm like, okay, we working with something. He, he got that talk going. You know, and I know he's been talking like this before, 
but the words he's using make sense. Use the history. Don't try to talk tough. Don't try to be tough. Be you that's annoyed with everything. That's just frustrated with how things are. That's what you got to do, and that's what he's doing. I think he's doing well right here. Solo talks up Cody, and then the music plays. Cody is so serious and upset, he goes through his intro in a British banker suit. Cody puts his serious face on, gets the mic, says that he wants to, that they both want the same thing, but they got to go through all this, you know. But he says, might as well make it official and say, you and me, undisputed belt, SummerSlam. Cody doesn't want to wait for the pay per view and seems to forget that he's outnumbered. I'm like, you, you know, your privilege is showing, stupid. You just got in there, locked eyes on Solo, and forgot there's three other people in that ring. And legitimately, he couldn't hang with either one of them in an actual fight. Not one. Not one. Um, they surround Cody. They start beating on him a little, kind of. I mean, they got a like a punch in or something. Then Cody just beats the hell out of all of them with ease. With ease. Until Jacob stops him. And I'm like, I understand Cody's the champion. And I know he's got to look a little tough, a little fight back. But, uh, I don't know. But it wasn't a long fight. But Jacob had to stop him. Randy, his music plays. Why? He should just ran to the ring. Then his music play. But thanks for alerting the bad guys that there's somebody coming in to save the day. That's just brilliant. But then they leave the ring to go after him instead of staying in the ring and waiting for him and whooping him up as he get in. But they go outside the ring and Randy beats them down. They, he, he beats down G.O.D. Then Randy, he beat them all down. Green kills Solo Sokoa. Jacob shoulder tackles Randy and they beat down Randy for a short bit. Randy gets, Randy starts beating G.O.D. down by himself. Then Jacob has to stop that. Solo and Fatu, Andre the Giant, Cody into the ropes. If y'all know what that means. While, or, or, uh, Cactus jacks his neck into it. Whichever it takes to say he done tied him up in the ropes by his arms. Crucifix him in the ropes. But G.O.D., they use the steps to beat down Randy. Randy gets a beat down via three thrust kicks by Jacob while Solo makes Cody watch. It is, look, y'all, at this juncture, it is right. This is what you use. This is what you use when you want to recap it. Don't use too much else. Don't use too much perfect. It's perfect. Solo Sokoa yelling and hollering at Cody. This is your fault. This is what you get. He's yelling at him. He's telling him how it's going to be. He's all in his grill piece. Cody making Cody watch. Making him watch what happened to Randy. That's what's great. It's pandemonium. It looks like a dangerous situation. The fans are all messed up. The commentary, they're, they're messed up, but you can tell they're kind of Reading from our script here, but is this is the moment. This is the moment when you say Solo Sokoa started his climb. Anytime before this, like he's trying to make waves, but the splash ain't happening. But this, this was all. Uh, this was horseman level stuff. They power bomb. Randy onto the announce table, collapsing it. Very common situation. Solo delivers the finisher, his Samoan Spike to Cody, who has to just hang in defeat. The bloodline stands triumphant. And I noted that I was annoyed at how it looked like it was going, because I thought, I was like, okay, the, the, the bloodline's about to take a long beat down and get humiliated by two people. Two people beat down four. You know, but... Okay, tag championship is out of the window. It's not even a part of this. Excellent. Randy, Kevin, Cody. And I hope Kevin's family 
it's okay, it gets better. I hope nothing tragic has befallen. You know, mainly because I want Kevin in a better mental headspace for wrestling and his own personal life. Um, because I don't want tragedy to befall anyone. I really don't. Um, I just have no sympathy or empathy for people that cause harm to others. This is pro wrestling. This is supposed to be harmful. You just can't get in there and be like, all right, y'all, let's get along. You know, and we'll flip a coin and you call it. And whoever loses, loses the match and we go to the back because we're friends. Eh, no. Nah, so, you know, let's have some strife. And strife they gave us. I am enjoying this. This is good this is good. This ended the way it needs. This was great. I like this. Solo Sokoa can say he's beginning his rise here. Cannot lose next week. Own the ring. Own the ring. You're the tribal chief. That ring is your territory while you're in it. And no one claims it. Nobody. Throw something out there like that. And then, it, damn, that'd be raw. Never mind. I was going to say, you know, if you can get this way and you can and you get the title, SmackDown, when you wrestle, I, instead of, I was going to say put everything red, but that'd be raw. Red lighting. Keep, you know, the whole match, red lighting. Win or lose, red lighting. Something. That'd be cool, I guess. I don't know. What do y'all think? Anyway. This has been Cedric for CRS The Commentary on Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And I'll see you next time.